Hi, again, sorry. Um, so this is going to be a part two. Um, this won't take nearly as long, but I do want to talk a little bit of, of the uh, remaining areas within um, scarcity in this regard. And so, again, um, we've talked about the areas of Sigmund Freud, ages, um, when it comes to things like your terrible twos or your teenagers in terms of restriction and scarcity. So we cling to things that we have regard um with regards to freedom, and they're especially sensitive to these freedoms. So again, anytime that a freedom is taken away, um, that's where we want it that much more. Because you know, for the most part, we don't like being told what to do. So there's one area in terms of uh, where age comes into play here, um, kind of as cognitive development, if you will. The other thing is scarcity can deal with how information is evaluated. So limited access makes people want things more and also more favorable favorable to it, and regardless if they actually wanted it or not. And this comes with censorship as well. Um, when a message cannot be received, we want it because it's more exclusive in this case. So when a person says you can't have this or um, something is being excluded because of things like censorship, we want to hear it, we want to understand it. This is a very important thing to us um, because again, censorship in this case limits that freedom so this is the exclusivity this is things like um, you know video game ratings movie ratings um, and again we think of it in the notion of teenagers for instance I mentioned age range where that can come into play and that may be something to cons consider here so this holds true scarcity holds true with two conditions first is that scarce items are often revered because they are newly scarce um, so recently restriction is better than restriction for some time. So this is an area where you might talk about, well, and Dr. Daniel, there's maybe uh, an, an example where things are scarce at a grocery store. Like um, you may, if you go to a grocery store and there is plenty of, uh, there's not a lot of fruit left on the shelf, you may sit there and say, this may be the case because it's gone bad. So like if there's a group of bananas on the shelf and there's only like one bunch left, you may say this one is only there because it's been neglected for a long time. So it's scarce because it's been there for a long time. Whereas, let's stay with the grocery store example, um, we could say something's been newly scarce. So think of, um, oh, um, why am I blanking on the... Uh, a mint. Um, so I'm thinking of, let's say, around the time of the Kentucky Derby. People buy um, mints a lot for mint julep um, in terms of the, the plant in this case. And um, this is a really interesting facet of where if you go to the grocery store during ten, this time, it becomes nearly scarce. <laughs> in North Carolina, specifically, uh, when it snows, Milk, bread, beer, almost is always off the shelf, particularly on the east side of the state, not so much up here. Uh, we tend to keep our wits about us because we see a little bit more snow in this case. But again, it's recently scarce versus something that's been scarce for a whole, whole long time. But this can, however, work uh, for someone who has never experienced this phenomenon and thus perceives it as new. So it may not actually be new itself. Uh, in terms of newly scarce, but it may be that they perceive it that way. So um, this is important if you're a shop owner and you're looking at to using the scarcity route to do things in cycles. And you may see this if you go to a store quite frequently that people do things in cycles to make things seem more scarce in very limited times. Um, so you think of it in the way that um, so someone mentioned the uh, McDonald's McRib, for instance. They they always promote it as a scarce item that's only going to be around for a limited time. Uh, now, granted, the funny thing is, my my friend, I, I don't really eat at McDonald's at all, but my friend would always talk about the only time I want it is when it's scarce, um, even though it doesn't exist when it isn't. Uh, in this case, so. Um, scarce items also are more appealing when we compete with each other. So this is quintessential look at, um, what do you call it, Black Friday, where people kind of beat each other up to try to get the this particular toy. And so it is really keeping up with the Joneses, if you will, and trying to make sure that you have something that another person don't, doesn't. 
Um, the last thing to promote and the last thing to talk about with Cialdini is that emotional arousing qualities are what helps this mentality. But it also has dangers because it's hard to fight it. I want to tell that car salesperson to, t to, well, I want to tell him that I'm not interested. I want to tell him that um, I don't adhere to his standards of scarcity. I don't think the way he's doing it is appropriate. Um, and I'm not going to buy because of that. However, it's still, what, what if that person was right, though? You know, it's still that notion of that, what if that person was actually right in terms of their persuasive attempt? Um, because, you know, it could be gone tomorrow, and I, w I could be SOL in this case. And so, um, what if that person, he or she, is right? So I do have to calm myself. I do have to fight that urge, even though it's going to be extremely difficult. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll talk a little bit more about the exam upcoming as well as um, we'll have our 30 Theory Thursday about the elaboration likelihood model, uh, which is one of my favorite dual processing models, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as that time comes. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks.